He's back from the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. How are you doing, Dieter? You're live. That's good. I'm tired, but <laughs> I don't know if I'm emotionally or physically tired. Uh, Steph Curry is certainly not waking me up with, with this cold streak, man. He's the only thing colder than Green Bay, Wisconsin right now. Oh, my goodness. That's how we're getting into this. This is Locked on Warriors. <laughs> Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen. We're free and available on all platforms. He's Dieter Kurtenbach. I'm Cyrus Sotsas. You can follow him on Twitter at Dieter. You can follow me on Twitter at Docsurf Rocho. And you can follow this program on Twitter at Locked On Dubs. I want to talk football, but this is not a football show. Um, we're talking about the Warriors. First of all, I want to say, Dieter, this was one of the greatest uh, weekends in, in my recent memory of Bay Area sports between the Warriors somehow pulling off a 2-0 record, uh, given how crappy they've been playing, the Niners somehow pulling off that win thanks to a blocked punt and Aaron Rodgers being Aaron Rodgers, of course. But, uh, but we're here to talk Warriors. Um, did you get a chance to watch the games while you, while you were it, it was surrounded by big, fat people who love cheese? <laughs> well, first off, I fit in great in that category. Um, it's yeah, I was able to watch a good deal of it. I wasn't able to watch the final minutes of, of the game against the Jazz until it was uh, well said and done. Um, I, I, you know, let me put it to you this way: uh, it, it didn't feel like a win. <laughs> it felt it felt real sluggish, man. Um, I, I, you know, it's nice that they got the W, but that was a yes. Garoppolovian performance by by some Warriors on that night. <laughs> Uh, just getting carried over the finish line. Um, you know my stance on the Utah Jazz. I think they're fraudulent. I think that Rudy Gobert wants a lot of credit for something God gave him, and he hasn't done much with. Right. Uh, I think uh, I just don't see them as an actual title contender, and they've done absolutely nothing to to disprove that. Uh, at the same time, these Golden State Warriors right now, expectedly, don't look anything like a title contender either. And uh, I... I Steph is playing so poorly. I, I got some numbers for you. Obviously, we know you know the shooting percentage from the field, the shooting percentage from beyond the arc, 41 and 37. But that all kind of equates into a stat that I prefer, which is you know effective field goal percentage. And uh, Steph is the guy in the NBA who made effective field goal percentage the number, at least right. in my opinion. James Harden is all about true shooting percentage because it has the free throws in it. I don't care about free throws. I think free throws are for cowards. I want effective shooting percentage. And Steph Curry currently has an effective shooting percentage after that one for 11 game from beyond the arc against Utah of 53.5%. Um, the last time that he had a rating that low was 2009, 2010, when he was a rookie. Uh, and the you- three-point shot didn't really exist in the league. Can you explain to the audience what an effective shooting percentage is so that... Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Layman? So it, it's basically just a weighted shooting percentage. Um, a three-point shot obviously ca- counts for three. A two-pointer counts for two. So they grade a three-point shot as worth one more point. So it's right, just right. weighted in that regard. So uh, 50 is the break-even to just being a decent, effective player. Uh you know, for, for reference, Russell Westbrook is always under 50. Um, and Steph Curry is consistently around 60. Um, and that means that essentially he's getting, you know, he's getting uh, points on, on 60% of his touches or yeah, 60% of his shots. Um, it, it is, it is jarring what we're seeing here and yeah. it can't be contributed to, it can't be attributed to just one, single thing um whether it's the hand which is very understandable given this you know how bad that injury looked in the moment we were all having flashbacks along with curry to two seasons ago uh, and aaron baines off of that but you know the legs don't seem totally right he's apparently missing free throws and in warm-ups and stuff and uh i think that we might be I say this and watch him go off uh, on Tuesday, but uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, I think we might be beyond the point where we just say, oh, it will fix itself. It will just change. He's in a slump, whatever. Like this is not, he's Steph Curry. This doesn't happen. 
and the fact that it's continuing to happen, that there really has been no repetitive respite. Like you get one good game, you get three bad ones. You get one good game, you get five bad ones. The fact that there hasn't been a streak, the fact that there hasn't been a flurry, the fact that, it, it, you know, even in the game where he gets his game winner against Houston, eh, um, great shot, awesome separation. Why are the Warriors having to hit a game winner against Houston, who is admittedly playing better basketball? Um, right. it, 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 something's up, and it stinks because they're not in a position to just say, sit down for a while. You know, take your time, figure it out, take four or five games off in a row, and we'll get you right because Draymond's out for who knows how long. Now, Clay Thompson didn't practice today. We're talking on Monday with right. the knee injury. Um, and they're going to be hyper cautious about that. There's no James Wiseman. I know he doesn't really fit into the category there, but, you know, Andre Guadala is on one of his sabbaticals that he takes so often during the season. <laughs> like they just don't, they don't have, they don't have the kind of cushion they once had. And they certainly don't have the reinforcements that they need to allow Steph to take a couple of days off and get right. So right. he's going to have to go out there. And, and I don't know if he's suffering or mentally, physically, combination, all the three, top, bottom, middle. Um, but but something something is absolutely not right and it needs to get right. And I just I, I because I can't pinpoint what the problem is. It's very hard for me to pinpoint the solution, too. And that makes this not so much fun. Yeah, and I don't think anyone can pinpoint it. I want to quickly share uh, this slide from Steph. This was following the game um, where he was just very direct and he was very to the point. And um, whether this encourages Dub Nation or discourages them, that's up to you to decide. But this was from Slater, I presume. From AC, yeah, correct. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of different sources for this. This was a part of the post game press conference. Um, And here's Stephen Curry following the Utah Jazz victory. Do you feel anything mechanically? Is up, or I mean, do you uh, just what do you feel about your shot right now? Who gives a damn about excuses? Mm -hmm. Anything that anybody wants to hear about why you either make shots or you miss shots. So you got to stop making some shots. Do you feel there is, even if you're not going to reveal them, reasons behind it? No. No. Okay. How your hands feel? By the way, I don't think we've asked. Still attached to my body, and I'm still getting up. (laughs) Still getting up plenty of attempts. So. I'm trying to have fun with it. It's, it's a uh, it's a big picture perspective on you know how you approach the game, the work that you put in, and um, it's obviously frustrating. I, I want to shoot the ball. It's frustrating in the games. I kicked the chair the other day um, for that reason. So it's not like I don't care. You know, you're not trying to figure it out, but I don't get preoccupied with it. To Marty's question, like of that's the only part of my game that matters. Um, it will matter. I need to, you know, make shots for us to, you know, get to the level that we want to be at. But other than that, not worried about it. And I want to also show this stat uh, while I'm sharing my screen for just a minute. Um, this is courtesy of Stat Muse that shows the worst shooting performances of Steph Steph Curry's career. I don't always weirds me out when they put Steph Stephen Curry's career. Uh, granted, minimum twenty attempts, and of this, the six, mm-hmm. uh, five are this season. Um, yeah. And and the, and the thing is, every single excuse I've, I hear from people is logical. For example, I've heard, well, Draymond Green's absence is playing a part because Steph is now the primary ball handler and he's taking more on himself. Well, this was happening before Draymond went out. Um, I, I, the only th- the only thing I can pinpoint is the timing of his struggles when it began, and it was during the pursuit of the three point mark. Um, it never recovered after that. I mean, he's had no. good nights here and there, but there's no consistency. Um, I don't know if it's exhaustion. I was at the game Friday night, decided to put on the old media credential. Uh, and, and, I, and I'd honestly do that a lot more if the community wasn't such a bitch. Um, I, it's just, I don't, I don't know how you do it. I know Alameda and San Ramon are two different worlds, but even from Alameda crossing that bridge, I don't know how you do it half the time. But uh, <laughs> I, I was I was sitting courtside with my friend Rick Barry. They honored him that night. And Steph was missing a lot of warmups, but his vibe was good. Like his energy was still positive. He still had that same uh, joyful and uh, 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 exuberance mm-hmm. of, of just happiness of just love for the game. Um, they're just not falling. Some of them are clearly forced. Uh, you could tell. I, I almost wonder if he should go back to the, the rule book for most players when they struggle with deep shots, which is just go for the easy ones, go for the mm-hmm. simple layups, go for, mm-hmm. you know, to drive to the paint and shoot those simple floaters if you have to. Um, yeah. But that, but the, the, but the problem with that is, and, and you're not wrong. Cause like part of me is thinking, well, he hasn't shot. You know, you go through that stat muse stat, and it's like, well, how many times before this, when he was struggling, did he actually shoot 
20 shots in a game. Like how, you know, this is, this is a relatively new occurrence for one Wardell Stephen Curry, because when he first came into extreme providence, prominence in the league, well, if he had a, a bad game, the Warriors were still such a team and so far ahead of everybody else, perhaps even light years that uh, <laughs> they, that they didn't need him to shoot. Just the gravity alone was enough to create the, the, the imbalance. And right. the gravity alone is still very powerful, but yeah, it is. He, he he has taken it upon himself to play modern basketball. And when it works, I mean, the modern basketball that he helped create and then was taken to whole other levels over the last couple of years when he had Kevin Durant there to just carry the load for him if he was having a bad night. And Kevin, vice versa. Uh, now, And those two were so – it was so rare because, you know, one of those two going to have a bad night on the same night? Like, Never. I don't never. think it ever happened. So, um, and they never really had bad nights because they didn't have the load of an entire team on their shoulders, right. but for maybe once a month, you know, just for, for grins. Uh, and they, they enjoyed it because it felt like old times and being on a real basketball team or something to that effect, regardless. Um, he's putting up a ton of shots. He has to put up a ton of shots. And so the notion that, Oh, just go and let, let's go into the lane and do it. Cool. Now he gets to go up against four dudes ready to hack his neck off. Uh, in the lane, like uh, it, it, shooting uh, legitimately. I think there's an argument that shooting from three for Steph Curry at distance is an easier thing for him to do because it's less physically demanding. All it requires right. is cardio and timing. I mean, certainly no one else can do it the way he does it when he is on, but he is in such great shape that he just, uh, just chuck it from anywhere and, and it gets, you know, further extended out and out and out. Um, so I, I don't know if that's the solution, which is do the harder thing. Um, but logically speaking, he would have a higher field goal percentage if he does that. He finishes at the rim as well as anybody not named Ky- Kyrie Irving for his right. size. So it, it's kind of this oxymoronic, it's, a, it's certainly paradoxical concept of he needs to probably stop shooting as many threes, but then he's going to be even more taxed because he's, he's going into the lane and doing all this stuff. And by the way, the gravity really works best when he's outside and then he's, you know, so I I don't know if there's an easy solution to this. I I do like the fact that he's exploring more in the mid range uh, as of late. Uh, It doesn't seem as if he wants to make that really part of his full-time bag. And that's understandable. You're this far into the damn game. Why are we pretending as if you're something you're not? Um, But we saw it, you know, in Houston, that's a highlight moment. It was his first, well, you know, actual buzzer beater game winner in, in his NBA career, um, which says something in and of itself about, you know, the stature and size and why it might not be a good idea for him to just go to the rack every play. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, the, the, that shot show, uh, it was a nice example of him being more of a mid-range uh, artist this year. And I think that that's something that absolutely needs to be part of the game, but it, it can't be the backbone of it. So, no. I, <laughs> Again, I think that the Warriors, and particularly Steve Kerr and Steph, as we heard there, and I, you know, you could do nothing but appreciate his professionalism and his, you know, in, inability to feel sorry for himself. Um, which, you know, just, if you're wondering why this team wins championships, that guy. Then he also right, has Draymond right. Green. You get those two together, and Clay Thompson, who's a one of one, and it's like, yeah, I can see how that created a good culture. Uh, I could also see how any of those guys in a different environment could not work so well, um, but they, they had it all. They had the right brew going and they still do, in my opinion. I, I, I just feel like, you know, the, he probably needs a couple of days off and they just can't give it to him. And that's, that's, uh, that's a problem. <laughs> when we come back, uh, we're going to delve more into this. Uh, I mean, granted the Warriors went two and O, but it wasn't like the most encouraging two and O that you're going to have, especially for this Warriors team. First, uh, Dieter, uh, you know, I haven't had a chance to download um, True Bill yet. What I is love your Truebill. experience? Yeah, d- describe your experience save, with Truebill. Save me, save me a ton of money, man. Um, listen, I don't know how many people out there are hardcore about their budgets and going deep into their credit card statements every month and just making sure that, hey, everything's on the up and up here. I try to do it. That was a good month. And then uh, it's been probably five years since that happened. And it, it's nice to have a, a system like Truebill because it's so easy to sign up for stuff and it's so hard to cancel it. And that's the entire point of this wild internet commerce marketplace we got going on here. Right. And if you're not on top of it, they'll get you, man. And you'll be paying somebody nine, 12, $50 a month. 
And you're like, damn, I thought I canceled that four and a half years ago. Congratulations. You got got. And Truebill <laughs> is uh, Truebill legitimately will automate that process for you and just say, hey, buddy, it's like Tinder for for bad charges. Just oh, say, hey, buddy, there you go. what are you thinking about this? And you're just like, swipe that bad boy left. Take care of that for me, Truebill. And they do. And it's uh, it's saving me a ton of cash. On average, it saves people up to $720 a year. Um, and again, you, it's hard to tell what you're subscribing to, what you're not subscribing to, what you're paying each month. Um, mm -hmm. Truebill has over 2 million users and helped them save over $100 million. Don't fall for subscription totally scams. Uh, yeah, same. No, like legitimately, I think I saved like a couple, couple hundo. Damn, I yeah, gotta I mean, do that. And if you think yeah. about like, you just think about like, when would this have been dealt with? Years from now? That's not good. <laughs> no. I was paying for two Netflixes at one point. It's like, that ain't yeah. good. I know. I know I'm doing something there myself. I got to sign up for this. Next time I'm doing this free, I'll be a subscriber. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash lock on NBA. Go right now. Truebill.com slash lock on NBA could save you thousands a year. And this show is also brought to you by Built Bar. It's the new year. So that Delightful. means new year's resolutions. Dieter, you've tried these things. I'm still waiting for my package. You love yeah. them, right? I, I, I've been a lifelong fat boy and I try to be <laughs> a, a skinny boy. And, um, you know, let me tell you, uh, I am no stranger to the alternate meal plan and <laughs> built bar was for a good stretch. And this was well before we, I started working with locked on here, uh, built bar was part of the daily routine. Have one of those bad boys for breakfast and you could rock until like six, 7 PM. I mean, it was those things when they, I, they're not just they're built because a lot of people use them to like put on some str strong muscle because it's got a great protein to carb ratio and all that. But these these things are also built to last. It, it sits in your stomach. And this is a good thing, like like just a log and you're, you're able to function all day. But like you just you're not hungry. You are dealt with. You are satiated. The built bar built bar is a great product, man. I mean, I got I got a hierarchy of bars. Bill of Bar is very high on that hierarchy. And I'd be saying that even if they weren't paying us, because uh, let me tell you, it's not number one, but it's pretty close <laughs> to number one. <laughs> it's filling. It's healthy. That's all you need yep. to hear. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen. The NBA trade deadline is Thursday, February 10th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, <laughs> noon Pacific, and Locked On NBA will be covering it live from 2 to 4 p.m. Join Kim Becker, John Corrales, Locked On Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd, and NBA veteran Antonio Daniels, and get analysis of every blockbuster move. Subscribe to Locked On NBA YouTube and turn your notifications on so you know when they go live. Um, that's going to be I, a real dud, by the way. I mean, they got a great cast, but the NBA trend deadline is really shaping up to suck. Uh, it could, it could. Very that's just where it's at right now. We'll let you know if that changes, but my goodness. <laughs> um, I, 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 you know, I'm driving around in Wisconsin. I make a couple phone calls, keep your, keep your mind off of the monotony. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I made a phone call to a friend of mine who, who works in the league and, was like, hey man, is there just like anything? I know not nothing's happening with the Warriors, but like, just generally curious if there's you know anything floating around the league, like just in general, uh, you know, stuff that I should look out for that maybe would affect me. And this guy's like, man, where are you driving right now? And I'm like, I'm in Wisconsin. He's like, what's around you? I said, nothing. He goes, same over here. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if, the, if the Lakers actually had assets to offer, we would see a trade, but. They got nothing to put on the table that any other team wants. And then you got Dory Correct. Elvis, who's playing his egotistical, uh, you know, quote unquote, mind games that everyone can transparently see right through. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it is crazy. But so I think given the way the Warriors are playing right now, first of all, your boy Kevon Looney, in my opinion, is the best player on the team at the moment. He is producing <laughs> tremendously both with rebounding, inside toughness, I, scoring. I, I love Kevon Looney, but the fact that that's a statement that I can't initially clap back on is a real problem for this team. It is team. a problem. And so, and this is so, so uh, uh, Bob Myers was on a, another podcast. I won't name it, uh, but he basically said that it's unlikely the Warriors are going to make a move. What concerns me about this is two things. One, James Wiseman, even if he does come back, which no one knows now if he's, ever even going to this is turning into worst case yeah, scenario for the warriors it's a uh, he, he won't have the experience to contribute in the postseason so so he's a wash 
if what if Kevon Looney gets hurt, this team is screwed. And it's not like he has a tremendous track record of health. Like it's it's not like he's in he's yeah. It's literally what he's he's literally known best for not being healthy. Yes. So, so I'm concerned. I, I look, I look, I, for some reason I have become synonymous on social media with Paul Millsap and the Warriors for, for better or worse. I still think he would be a great addition to this team, especially now. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Are you, are you on Millsap? No, no, no. Just on, on Bob Myers in general. And I guess Millsap. Yeah. But just, just the fact the Warriors are probably going to stand pat. Is that a good decision or do you think that's going to bite them in the ass? Well, I think, I think it, it, it... <sighs> it depends on what we're asking in terms of scale, right? So it, it, there's no big move that can be made that right. can appreciably allow the Warriors to do what it is they want to do. And that is uh, on a macro level, three things. They want to win a championship this year. Okay. I don't see a move out there that significantly, I'm talking like 10% in Las Vegas increases the Warriors chances of winning a title just this year. Right. The second thing they want to do is they want to maintain longevity. They want to, if they're not going to win a title, they want to be in the mix every year from here on out. And that means Kaminga. They still very much believe that means Wiseman. And by the way, you people might say, well, it doesn't mean Wiseman anymore. Well, then hell, don't you think every other team in the NBA knows that? And therefore he has no trade value. No like value. the yeah. only, th- th- this is James Wiseman has turned into my 2011 Hyundai Sonata. It has far more value to me than it does to anything else. And I'm not sure when it will actually get back on the road. So um, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, and, you know, <laughs> by the way, tremendous car when actually, you know, operating. Um, uh, <laughs> it's all those, it's all those warranties and recalls. I did. Dude, Hyundai now, 2011 versus Hyundai 2021 or 2022 is night and day, man. They're actually like legitimate now. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. I, I got, I got the first go around of legitimate yeah. Hyundais and I, I'm just, I, I'm exaggerating for effect. I do love my car. The fact that I've kept it this long. Um, yeah. yeah, we, we're also rocking a 2007 Honda, Honda CRV. <laughs> So oh, clearly we have high tastes in the curtain back castle, but uh, out. You're, you're reasonable. You're practical. I love it. I, I, I parked my car on the streets of San Francisco. Um, and so <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it, nevertheless, um, it, it, there, there's no, you know, Kaminga pool, you know, they, they think that this is, you know, Wiggins to a degree, this is, the next wave. So when old man Curry and old man Draymond and old man Clay are there, those those fine gentlemen that I just named will prop them up and maintain in a Spurs-like fashion, which really didn't happen as people remember it, but uh, because it was kind of just <laughs> Kawhi Leonard. But uh, <laughs> uh, they will, you know, and, and it will be just this great graceful passing of the torch and the flames will be slowly diverging between the years. It's really um, romantic and not going to happen that way, but this is their concept. And you know what? Uh, I can certainly think of worse things to do, especially when you paid X amount of money for a stadium and you have bills that are due. I would do everything in my power to make sure that I uh, didn't have a crappy basketball team because I need to make sure that asses remain planted in seats. Otherwise, we're all going bankrupt. So totally get that logic. And then the third thing is that the Warriors are at a 6x repeater tax right now. Um, They're paying $6 on every dollar they spend. So bringing in somebody... Somehow, I have no actual concept of how they would be able to do this trade-wise because outside of uh, the four main contracts that they have, the next highest paid person is Kavan Looney, uh, Mm -hmm. who, again, we have just determined is not only the Warriors' best current player, but also uh, their most uh, indispensable player outside of those previously named four. Uh, And the free agent, too. Yeah. yeah, They don't have the guys that – they don't have, like, assets, you know, they're in a much better situation than the Lakers, but like they don't have just like movable dudes on a contract that is expiring or that someone might be interested in. What they have is bottom, top, and one dude in the middle, and it's Kavon Looney waving hello to everybody. So yeah. um, it, 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 it's just totally unreasonable to think. Now, buyout market's a different ball game. This is a team that's always – just because of those things that I mentioned, this was a team that was never going to make a trade. It was always going to be a buyout market thing. And buyout market, I don't think it would, I don't think, you know how I feel about centers in the modern NBA. We could go on and on and on about it. Doesn't matter. It wouldn't hurt them to get a a, a very large gentleman on the buyout market, whomever that might be. Um, Paul Millsap doesn't do it for me because Paul Millsap doesn't solve the problem that would be presented if Kevon Looney misses a game. 
which is that they don't have anybody who can actually play the five. Uh, as much as Otto Porter and Emil Bielitsa have done a nice job and just sort of standing there and pretending to be fives, those dudes are stretch wings uh, who just are bigger than, you know, the wispy ones like Andrew Wiggins. You so, don't think Millsap could play the five? I, I totally think he could play that. He's the same height as Looney. You know, he's not defensively. Same. He can't not, not for a lick. Uh, let me, here's, here's a, here's a wonderful question to ask anybody who's on the uh, Paul Millsap train. Um, the Brooklyn Nets are supposedly a championship contender and yet they're going to buy him out. Well, you guess exactly. Supposedly. And, and you're giving way too much credit to uh, Sean Marks for, because because you're basically insinuating he's a he's a genius, and because he made it. No, where, where was the insinuation of the genius? All I'm say, saying is there is a team. There is a team that is competing for a title in Brooklyn, allegedly. New York. Yes, allegedly. I'm I mean, sorry. Take a look at the Eastern Conference standings. Take they got Kevin fucking Durant on their team. Like, they do. It, 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 like what what are we doing here? Like they're clearly a team that has the ability to win a title, and they say we don't need Paul Millsap to do that. And the Golden State Warriors are going to say, oh, that's the guy that we need to get there. Like, that just just doesn't make any sense. It's logically unsound. I don't like the Nets argument just because they have plenty of big men already. That's the same team that also like DeAndre Jordan because they have a a girth of it at that position. And Millsap can shoot the three. I don't think he's as bad defensively as you say he is. He would be the only defensive liability on on the team. And when you're playing against a team like, let's say, the Jazz, who have a Rudy Gobert, you don't need a great defender in a position like that. You need a body on him. Uh, you, you play a team you, you like- better, first off, first off, Paul Millsap has an effective field goal percentage, which we just went over of 40 this year. Well, this, yeah. In what five minutes a game. I, I don't like gauging that. I want to see him play 15 to 20 before making proper assessments. He's not a locker room cancer. He's not no, going no, like, which nothing but class. Part of this, right? Like I think chemistry is very important. I'm not saying he's in 11 the- minutes a game, by the way. Oh, he's playing 11. Okay, so he's not like the fix-all for everything. And not to mention like, to me, the net system versus the warrior system is night and day. Like I, I, the Warriors I get that. make players better. And, and I do think that if he came in here, he would improve. All I'm saying is, to me, the Warriors are, are in dire need of someone who can rebound. And I know you don't re- appreciate that as much as I do. But in, in games where the Warriors are being outshot by eight field goal attempts a game, like against the Houston yeah. Rockets, for example, uh, and last week against the Grizzlies, they had 18 fewer attempts. That's where sh- uh, rebounding is important because you're giving up second chance points, uh, second chance opportunities to other teams. And I don't like that. I don't want to see other teams continuing to gain momentum by getting offensive rebounds. Turnovers are a huge part of that too. But whether it's Millsap, whether it's another body, they need it, something. Another you know? another body's fine. This body don't work. He's six foot seven. He's six foot seven. He might be built like a ship brick house back yes. in the day. But like, it, this is not a guy who is going to clean the box. I mean, here's the thing with Looney. He's six foot nine but he plays thick and he plays tall because he's fundamentally sound in all of those basic fundamental things that you need to do to be a center or or like an official center in the league of which there are maybe seven. So he boxes out like nobody's business. Uh, He is great. Like his super skills are two things that will never show up on a box score, which are setting picks on the perimeter where he is just, he is a a human barricade and tipping out rebounds. He's great at it. He's exceptional at it. And he has a knack for rebounding, which, again, just a m- minuscule of a knack for rebounding compared to, you know, w- w- the 90s or the early 2000s goes a long way. Millsap doesn't have a nose for the ball as a rebounder I at know, all. I know, and he you're, doesn't you're making, set good picks. I'm and he doesn't play good Looney. defense. I'm not hating on Looney. If, okay, no, if it's no, not no Millsap. No one's hating on Looney. I'm saying that saying that Millsap is in any way a facsimile for Kavon Looney is to hold on to the notion of Paul Millsap when he was 31, 32, 33, and not the Paul Millsap we've seen for the last three years, last two in Denver and then this year in Brooklyn at 34, 35, 36, where he is officially and unequivocally washed. <laughs> I don't know. I, this is the first season. His efficiency numbers are not great. I wouldn't apply the term washed until like he's a career 50% effective field goal shooter. I mean, like he's washed. He's washed. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. it happens to the best of us, but like he's the same age as David West was. If you compare David West numbers to his at, the, at their point of his career, I'm, I'm guessing it would be very similar. I just it look, if it's not, if it's not Millsap, fine. If it's not Millsap, we won't agree on that. Fine. But the Warriors need to get, some reinforcement down low because Looney and Bielisa is your only two big men. 
is I not going to win a championship. I agree uh, with and, that. And they, and they have to prepare. I just don't they need to get back smile gauge. That's what they I need. think. <laughs> let's uh, let's real quickly talk about Bet Online, one of our official sponsors. Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. It's a new year and a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first Damn. deposit. That's a lot of money. Just use our promo code LOCKED ON to get started and get that 50% welcome bonus from football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms as we wrap things up here. Um, one player I think that could make a significant difference who is on the roster and who could give them some help inside mm-hmm. uh, is um, Jonathan Kaminga, who, who yes. when he plays, is producing. But the problem is in the last game, for example, he only had eight minutes. Uh, yeah. Moses Moody, who when he goes to Santa Cruz, lights it up. Then he comes back up here and gets zero minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you care about Steve Kerr's discriminatory behavior towards the, the rookies? Uh, do you like it? Do you dislike it? What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I think discriminatory yeah. behavior, while technically sound, uh, might not <laughs> might not fly. Um, how about uh, do I care for Steve Kerr's current rotation? No, there's a weirdness to it, and yes. I think that um, listen, I am not somebody who gets buried in the minutia of the rotations unless it is like aggressively egregious. Uh, I will say this as a defense of Steve Kerr. Because I do believe that, especially with this kind of stuff, we have to represent both sides. There is no right. empirical right, uh, nor an empirical wrong. Jonathan Kaminga's inability to not foul when he's on the floor is uh, no bueno. It's a bad situation, and it hurts the Warriors in more ways than just this guy's going to the line. This guy, it slows the game down for Golden State. And as athletic and as impressive as Kaminga can be, as a floor runner, um, the fact that you can't trust him defensively, and again, understanding he only had one foul in that 821, um, not being able to trust him defensively to not mess up and not slow the game down and not put the Warriors in a situation that is disadvantageous uh, is problematic. Now, the flip side is, well... How else are you supposed to get this guy ready? How else are you supposed to get this guy minutes? And I I, I don't know the right answer. Um, I think that the way that they were using him early, in the, I, know, I know this, the way they were using him early <laughs> in the season was a sort of break glass in case of emergency situation, right? Where, right. hey, the game is slowed down. We need some vigor. We need something new. Here's some Jonathan Kaminga. And go out there and, and just – Bowl in a China shop, mess some stuff up for better or for worse. And because the Warriors thrive in chaos, or at least I thought they used to. Uh, maybe that is <laughs> right, an exclusive. Right. I, I thought that maybe that's a Draymond Green situation. Um, they don't. God, he's missed. He is missed, man. You know, there's no question. Right? He only does about yeah. three dozen things that no one else on the floor could <laughs> replicate. Right. Um, so I would like to see steady regular minutes for coming. The issue is. When Steph Curry is on the floor, you want the game going fast. Kaminga, while he can absolutely run at that pace with that with total ease, so often slows down the game. I also don't want to see Jonathan Kaminga out on the floor with the second unit because that doesn't really do anything for anybody. Right. Um, and I don't think it helps the second unit, and I don't think it helps the development of Jonathan Kaminga. So I, I there's some empathy here for Steve Kerr in the peculiarity of the predicament. Um, and I don't know what the right answer is, but I think that there is something to be said for getting a, a more static staff operation. Uh, I know that I know for a fact that Steph prefers first quarter, third quarter, second half of the second quarter, second his half old, of his old quarter. rotation that he did for like nine years. Yeah. 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 I know he prefers that because it allows him to get into a rhythm. Uh, he can work through some stuff. If he has a bad start, um, he he likes to play the macro game. 
And then, by the way, when he comes in, when it's crunch time, you know, end of the first half and, you know, end of the game, uh, he's already amped, right? Like those situations already call for more, but he works his way into games so very often. And I think that he's missing that because he just nine years of routine. Uh, so going back to that might make some sense. Would it put other people in a predicament? Perhaps the Clay Thompson thing. The Clay Thompson thing is really screwing him up. No, Draymond obviously screws him up. You know, Clay. Yeah. Who knows now when Clay is going to be back to thirty something minutes per game? Clay. Like we we can't say. We can't say when Clay's rotation is going to be locked in because he's always going to miss the second end of back to backs, and now he's just not even playing in any games. So. Uh, Iguodala just taking his sabbaticals is a big problem because you can't trust him to be the second unit guy. So the rotations are totally out of whack, and I see no, I see no recourse here for for them solidifying anytime soon. And Kerr has deemed it most appropriate, best to have Curry in a very different rotation as to. You know, improve the, the the team's overall play throughout the course of the game. I have no evidence to say that's not working. Um, I mean, who would who, who's to say it wouldn't be worse if it was just Jordan Poole at the beginning of the second quarter and nobody else? But uh, the Kaminga thing, it's like he, he has proven himself, or at least the Warriors have said that he's proven himself to be worthy of regular NBA rotation time. Um, right. Not in the same way of a Gary Payton second, but certainly in some way. And if that is no longer the case, they need to express that fully and go down there and let him drop 50 on some G leaguers heads or something, because, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, the, I, I, I like the Moody plan. I liked the Kaminga plan where it was going. They have the warriors, at least in my eyes, and who knows what that's worth, have redeemed themselves to a certain amount uh, for how they handled James Wiseman, which was extremely haphazard and piecemeal as last season went along. Uh, they really didn't know. Like they look like they knew what they were doing. Um, but <laughs> this year, I'd like to think that they know what they're doing. But right now, it's 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 a little bit confusing. And again, sympathy for Steve Kerr in this spot, because I don't think that there's a real clear cut answer. But I think they might just have to bite the bullet and and eat it a little bit with Kaminga, because the more he plays, I think it's unquestioned at this point of the season. I know we're still fairly early, but we're not we're not late either. Uh, yeah. it, it, like. <sighs> The, better, the more he plays, the better he gets. So they got to play. Yeah, exactly. That's my, that's I with you. I even saw him in the post the other day and he was excelling at it. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. I'd, I'd is, love more. I think you're on, I think for the first time in a long time, you're on to something here with him at the five. <laughs> oh, Kaminga at the five? Yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah, possibly. I wasn't even going there. I was just, I just want him to play more. I just like, like this is a, this is an infographic here. This four game stretch included three games of that horrendous road trip where they went one and three. Yeah. Uh, and then the first game at home, but he was averaging 17 and a half points per game over six rebounds, three assists. I mean, um, that was mostly the Detroit game. <laughs> well, that was a four game stretch, though. I mean, so no, you- I get it. I get it. I, it's just, you know, coming um, at the five is something that deserves to be explored. I just think it's just more minutes and I'd like to see Moody just a little more. I, I just, you know, I'm glad yeah, Kerr realized that playing Iggy and JTA together doesn't work. That's a disaster. No, JTA can only play when Andre doesn't play and Andre can only play when JTA doesn't play. One of those Agreed. things is not like the other, but. Agreed. Uh, and, and yeah, you said JTA, some- JTA is not a, an effective basketball player for this team unless he's in the Andre Guadalla role. Yes. Yeah. And I, yeah, I think we've seen he's not a good replacement for Draymond Green. You made a great point last week that that Iguodala fits the Draymond Green role the best when Green is out. Um, but again, Iggy's on this schedule Spanical. at 38 years of age where they're saving him for the playoffs. And yeah, that's where we're at. Um, Ten year well, so professor, the, man. What's up? Ten year oh, professor. Ten-year, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so before we go, uh, you got the, the you're taking the reins tomorrow. The Warriors are playing the Mavericks. It's on uh, TNT nationally televised. Yeah, we'll do somehow, a, yeah, they we'll always, do a post game. Okay, you're gonna do a post game. Okay, sounds good. Um, so I guess you'll you'll be recapping that game where Tim Hardaway Jr. is probably gonna score 35 with guaranteed. Six, Dwight Powell's six, gonna go off with six threes, and, and Finney Smith's gonna light it up. Yeah, it just seems to yeah. always happen with the Mavericks. So, <laughs> all right, my man, guaranteed. <laughs> you can follow Dieter Kernbach on Twitter at Dieter. You can follow me on Twitter at Docs or Frocho, and you can follow this program on Twitter at Locked On Dubs. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs, Locked On Bets, hosted by 
Your boy Q. So, dude, I gotta, I gotta oh, say yeah. this, man. I found your boy Q on Twitter. We found him. He, he's I, a yeah, superstar. He calls himself your boy Q. Hey, that's man. why he's, he's, he's just that's his name. Your boy. It's Q. working. He's, he's the PD of a of a sports talk radio station uh-huh. in Las Vegas, uh-huh. uh, and that's the extent of it. I, and we engage for a brief minute. And- a pros pro. <laughs> <laughs> with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. Always a pleasure, my man. Welcome back. I'm glad you're in better weather. And uh... <laughs> Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Until the next time, folks. Later.